We are glad to welcome you at the press conference of the prime and backup crews of ISS increments 50, 51. And I would like to remind you that not long ago, Interdepartmental Board has uh, finished uh, their meeting. They reviewed the results of the training of prime and backup crews, and they crews have been recommended to proceed with their training at Baikonur. I would like to introduce the commander of Soyuz MS Russia, Roscosmos, flight engineer Toma Peske, ESA, flight engineer Peggy Watson, USA, NASA, and Backup crew, commander of Soyuz MS Fyodor Yurchikin, Russia, Roscosmos, flight engineer Jack Fisher, United States, NASA, and flight engineer Paolo Nespoli, Italy, ESA. Dear crew members, I would like to congratulate you with completing your qualification simulations and with completing your training at Gagarin Training Space Center for your flight. We are ready to begin our conference, and uh, the first uh, question is from a representative of Roscosmos. Раз, раз. Есть? Нет? Саундчек. Есть? Все идет. This is Natalia Burtseva from Roscosmos TV studio. We would like to congratulate the prime and backup crews. And of course, my first question is regarding the qualification simulations. How did it go for you? Could you please tell us what grades you got, what abnormal situations you had to resolve? And uh, it has to do with both ISS simulations and Soyuz simulations. And uh, Peggy and the commander, could you please uh, answer these questions if possible? Well, uh, our qualification seems uh, have been completed successfully. We received excellent marks and uh, for, for both the ISS qualification sim and uh, for Soyuz uh, qualification simulation. We've had a lot of abnormal situation. There is no need to go over them here. It's really a great list. And uh, well, uh, we resolved all the abnormal situations that were in our exam card. And uh, we got excellent grades on uh, our exams. Well, this is end of nominal situation, and we have resolved it. Peggy, and could you please share what was it like for you to take this qualification simulation? Were you familiar with everything? Were you ready for all the nominal situations? Well, the training here is simply excellent, and uh, I, I think that uh, we have received experience in various of nominal situations. We ha have been uh, training and exercising these situations for two years almost. And uh, it, was, it was somewhat stressful for us. We uh, didn't work to make mistakes, of course. Toma, could you please uh, share your experience with us? Well, yes, we have been studying for a long time as a crew for almost two years. We have been training here, and uh, Oleg is an excellent commander. He knows a lot. And uh, I was just uh, basically taking breaks and watching him. And everything went well. And 
during our exam, and I think that our flight will be nominal. Soyuz is a very reliable vehicle, and uh, I guess we're going to discuss it after our flight, but at this point I'm sure that everything will go excellent uh, for us. Thank you. Bonjour, une question pour Thomas Pesquet, question for Thomas Pesquet, for French television TF1. Uh, you're training for seven years now. Do you feel ready? Est-ce que vous vous sentez prêt à partir après ces sept années d'entraînement? Uh, oui, ça fait, ça fait longtemps qu'on a, qu a commencé. Uh, C'est comme, uh, comme un marathon en fait, qui s'accélère sur la fin, parce que là, ça va vraiment dans les deux prochaines semaines. Ce n'est pas tout à fait fini, même si on a passé les examens, il nous reste des choses à faire. Mais je pense qu'on est prêt, on s'entraîne en tant que doublure d'abord, et c'est ce qui attend euh, nos camarades qui sont assis ici près de nous. Dans six mois, ce sera eux l'équipage principal, mais on est passé par là. Euh, donc cette phase euh, est aussi très importante pour la préparation de la mission. Je pense qu'aujourd'hui on est prêt. Si je regarde mes, mes deux membres d'équipage à ma droite, Oleg confirme, suis... <rire> on est prêt pour le vol et je pense que tout se passe très bien. Uh, I, mean, I was asked to translate some of the questions as well. So... Um, yes, we feel ready. We've been training for a long time. Uh, I think I have a very professional crew. Um, I'm trying not to make mistakes and not to spoil what I'm doing, but uh, as long as I can do this, uh, I'm sure we'll be fine on board. <laughs> Next question, please. Russian Cosmos, Yekaterina Belaglazova. Could you please share uh, what kind of experience you are going to have? For example, new experiment on the Russian segment. It's called Zarevo. So uh, new experiments uh, will be done by our uh, US colleagues, biological experiments. And what kind of new experience is European agency going to have? And also, are you planning any uh, spacewalks? Um, we're, we're going to do a lot of different types of research on board the International Space Station. And I think part of the reason it uh, is interesting to me is because there's so many different types of research. We're going to do, we're going to do uh, cell biology experiments, looking at how cells grow in space, uh, in particular stem cells. Uh, we are going to be doing combustion experiments, as well as physical experiments, looking at how um, uh, crystals solidify, different types of crystals solidify in a lack of gravity. So the, the main goal is typically using gra the lack of gravity as our, our question, of how, that, how does that change processes? And uh, I can say that the Russian science program includes a lot of experiments, over 50 scientific experiments, and of course some experiments have been going on for a long time. We have new experiments, of course. It is great that we will be working together with uh, our colleagues uh, in experiments that study fluid shifts in human body. And uh, we'll be doing an experiment together with Tema for our program. And this is great because we will be busy and uh, we will be content that uh, these experiments uh, will be beneficial to uh, the people or North. Uh, from, the, from the European Space Agency, there's a lot of uh, ongoing experiments right now on station that I'll continue doing. There's also a bunch of new experiments. We'll look at, uh, like I just said, we'll look at muscle research together. Um, and the goal is here to look at muscle in space and to get results of applied to the people uh, on Earth who are suffering from severe uh, muscle condition. Um, so this experiment is called Maris Sarcolab. Uh, we'll have a bunch of new experiments looking at the self-cleaning materials. Uh, which could be used in hospitals or in uh, transport pounds on the ground. We have new technology for cleaning water. Uh, there's a lot of new exciting technology for us uh, to test on board during the six months. And uh, yeah, we'll be happy to work together as much as possible. We'll, um, I'll take part in the US experiment. Those guys will take part in the European experiment because that's what we do it on the, on the international space station. So lots of exciting research. Go ahead. I have a question to Fedor Nikolaevich. Have you selected uh, your patch and so-called weightlessness indicator, a mascot for your increment? And another question. I was told 
after that. At some point, there was a, a situation of conflict aboard the ISS. Crew members uh, were not getting along well, and the psychologists were involved in that situation. So uh, could you please tell us about how you get along with each other? Well, you're correct. Well, the weightlessness indicator is going to be uh, a great uh, and uh, uh, symbol of kindness. It, it, and uh, uh, it is uh, very fit for space flight, and the space flight has not changed this uh, weightlessness indicator. It uh, has already been aboard the station. And uh, so with that, we're going to use uh, the same mascot. And uh, also, I uh, would like that my uh, crewmates, I'd like for my crewmates to take uh, their own mascots, because this has been a tradition. And uh, then, as far as our patch goes, we're still working on it. We're searching for uh, solutions. I think that we might have several options. Once again, this is going to be a surprise for everyone who supports us on this path. So everything is uh, still ahead of us. And then the psychological support. Well, you know, yes, I know what happened. I know the history of Russian space flight and international space flight, and I can share my opinion on the subject. Uh, it is rare that we've had people who had similar problems in space, and they're speaking very honestly about it. Well, there are certain issues, of course, but uh, look at these people, for example, people of different age, of different experience. And, uh, well, I keep telling to all my crew members that the most important part is to say hello to all, all your crewmates. This is what I have been doing. And this is what uh, uh, I still do. I still say hello to all the people that uh, have been my crew members. Thank you very much. And next question, please. Quel est ton votre sentiment, pardon, vraiment à l'intérieur? Est-ce qu'on avant de partir, est-ce qu'on rêve? Est-ce qu'on est stressé? Sans parler du travail en lui-même, vraiment le feeling dans sa tête, comment on est? Est-ce qu'on dort bien? Est-ce qu'on est stressé? What are you feeling inside? Thank you. Next question, please. The question is how do you how do you feel inside? Um, and uh, and yes, I feel I feel fine. It's been I've been sleeping well the last few weeks. Um, this is the third time actually that I go through the process of final, final exams and uh, getting ready for a flight. First two times as a, as a backup member and now as a prime member. So this time uh, there should be the rocket at the end of this of this, uh, this period in Baikonur. I'm hoping there will be a rocket. Um, but, but I think there's a part of me inside that still refuses to, to believe that it's really going to happen because it's just so big. Um, so, so I'm still, I'm still doing my best, and I think there'll be a time when I realize, yes, this time we're really going. When we're sitting in the rocket, all strapped in, and uh, we hear the commands for ignition, then, then I'll think there'll be a, a moment of shock, and then we'll have to refocus and uh, do our job for the for the ascent. Um, well, yeah, for the time being, I, I still sleep okay. Maybe the, the day before the launch is going to change, but for now, I'm doing good. Une question pour Thomas Pesquet. 
C'est une, c'est une question qui, qui malheureusement n'a pas encore de réponse. Euh, il y a eu beaucoup de changements dans les véhicules cargo qui, euh, qui approvisionnent l'ISA ces derniers temps. Euh, donc le saxophone, je n'ai pas encore de réponse définitive, j'espère qu'il va arriver parce que franchement, ça serait... on a un saxophone qui est, qui est prêt pour ça, qui est dans les starting blocks, si on peut dire. Euh, je ne sais pas encore, je sais pas encore. Mais c'est, il faut garder un petit peu de suspense, c'est bien, parce que sinon après les gens se désintéressent. Donc euh, on essaiera de répondre à cette question en, en temps réel, ce sera un peu la surprise du chef, si jamais il arrive, il arrivera après moi, c'est sûr. Donc ce ne sera pas au début de la mission, mais peut-être au milieu de la mission, j'aurai une, une belle surprise, peut-être pour Noël, peut-être pour mon anniversaire. Mais euh, ouais, je me tourne vers l'agence spatiale européenne, je leur, je leur pose la question. <rire> mais je pense qu'il devrait arriver, j'espère, j'ai confiance. Uh, so a question about uh, will I be able to take my saxophone with me to space? Uh, I don't have the answer to that question yet. Maybe you guys don't even want me to do that because I'm not really good at playing the saxophone, so that would be probably a pain for everybody. Um, but the answer is I don't know. Uh, there'll be lots, lots of changes with the cargo vehicles resupplying us on board the space station. So there's a chance it might be on one of these vehicles. Uh, maybe I get it as a Christmas present. Maybe I get it as a birthday present. But I'm, uh, I'm hoping. They'll make it to the ISS, and I'll leave it up there if I can. You can let me so that if somebody wants to play the saxophone, wants to learn to play the saxophone in the next six months, <laughs> then there'll be there'll be a possibility. Okay. Well, I'd like to ask. Can you hear me? So I have a question for Peggy. Peggy, could you please tell us, share your observations? Well, sometimes uh, it is common belief that uh, women uh, have more things to carry with them than men. So um, do you have any extra space for pictures, for cosmetics, because uh, a woman is supposed to look good in space as well? or? Is uh, uh, everything strictly regulated? Those kinds of things here on Earth. <laughs> so I, my baggage isn't going to be any heavier than these guys. And in fact, um, because because I have flown before, I know what I do need and what I don't need, and so it's it makes it a lot simpler, I think, having flown before to know I don't need that, I don't need that. It's not necessary. So. It, It just makes it easier for me to know. And so, no, I think my baggage is lighter than theirs. No saxophone. No saxophone. No saxophone. The next question is for Tama. Tama, you speak five languages. So could you please tell us what languages you speak and also what is your secret? How were you able to master these languages? Could you please share it with us so that we could also study more languages? And also, what language are you planning on studying? Well, there is no secret, really. I speak five languages, but I speak poorly in all languages, and this is easy. Really, there is no secret. I was born in France and uh, speak French. Then I studied English, Russian. I began studying the Russian language about six to seven years ago, but it was a very intensive course of study because you need to understand all the procedures of the Soyuz spacecraft because the procedures are in Russian. Also, we work together uh, on this vehicle. So, I also speak Spanish, I studied it in Spain. Currently, I'm living in Germany because uh, I work for ESA. And, uh, and it means that many countries are involved and many countries are working in the space industry. And uh, I like it there. And, uh, That's why I try to speak all the languages that are present in the space industry. On board the station, of course, we'll be speaking Russian, English, and French. Possibly we will try. They speak some French, but uh, I'm giving them lessons. And I think, and what will be uh, your next language to study? I think it will be Chinese, but we're going to discuss it after the flight. No time for uh, studying right now.
Booth, Peggy, Oleg, and Thomas. Are you a good crew together? You are two, Oleg and Peggy, you are two experimented astronauts. Thomas is a new one. How do you work together? Are you a good crew? A question for all the crew members of the prime crew to Oleg and Peggy. Oleg and Peggy, you're very experienced. Toma is uh, a rookie. But uh, how do you work together? Do you get along well together? I, I think we are a very lucky crew. Or at least I am lucky to have these two guys with me. They are both uh, very talented. Uh, and know their jobs, they're very professional, but the thing that, that stands out to me is um, that they're fun to be around, and we uh, spend a lot of time joking, supporting each other, so it's just, it's very, very enjoyable. I fully agree with Peggy. My crew members uh, are very good, high-spirited, friendly, kind uh, people, and I'm very happy, and I'm very thankful to uh, NASA, to ESA, for having selected these people for uh, our joint flight. And, and, and I think I have the easiest position on that crew by far, because Peggy will be the commander on board the space station, Oleg is the commander on, on board the Soyuz. Um, I'm the young guy, so I'm, I'm trying to do my best, but if I make mistakes, sometimes they, they just correct me, because they've been there, they know how it's done. And, um, and, that's, and that's very, very enjoyable for me to work in that crew. Um, everybody is open to feedback. Everybody is, is always in a good mood. I don't think I've seen any of these two guys in a bad mood in the last two years, which says something about the, the, the morale of the crew um, and the psychology. So um, I'm very, very much looking forward to uh, spending time with them on board the space station. I think we'll have a lot of fun, and obviously we'll get a lot of work done. This is Interfax News Agency, Kruglov Arseni. I have a question for Oleg. You have mentioned that you are going to select the same weightlessness indicator or mascot for your increment. Could you please tell us what this is going to be? Well, in fact, it's going to be slightly different. Also, uh, could you please stand up when speaking, because it is hard to find you among many people. Well. Uh, we have selected three small figurines of cosmonauts as our weightlessness indicator. These are made by Natalia Burtseva, and they look uh, somewhat like uh, us, and I think that later on it will be uh, great souvenirs uh, for us to remember our flight together as a crew. So, thank you, and you're welcome. Next question, TASS News Agency. Well, a question for, I have two questions. One question is for Peggy. <coughs> it is widely known that uh, U.S. elections will take place on the 8th of November, and at that time you will be on, at Baikonur preparing for launch. How are you going to vote? Are you going to vote in advance or from Baikonur? to uh, vote early. So I did that before I left the U.S. Uh, I, so I've already voted for uh, the election, and I'm pretty sure Jack has as well, too. So we had just planned in advance. Thank you. And uh, my second question is for all the crew members. And let's start with Oleg. Oleg, recently you have attended an event held at Belarus Embassy, and you were presented with the flag of Belarus. And as far as I understand it, you are going to take it with you to the station. And what else, what items that are dear to your heart, you and your crewmates are going to take to space. Well, uh, yes, indeed, I will take this flag because uh, this is my homeland. I was born there, I grew up there, I got my education there, and I'm uh, grateful for my education, my health that allowed me to become a cosmonaut. Also, I'm going to take letters of my family and friends, and I will be reading them in space. And of course, I will bring uh, souvenirs for other crew members, hopefully, if I can. I'm going to take a small banner of uh, Zapachny Brothers Circus because their performances bring joy to people, to children. Uh, I've taken a lot, uh, a couple of items from different universities. They're just uh, mementos of, of the university. Uh, I'm also taking a 4-H pad, which is a, a, a 
a young, uh, young teen group that uh, is in the United States, like for boys and girls, and uh, a few things for just uh, friends as well. So just a few things like that. Uh, and I'm taking a few, I'm taking a few presents to give away to uh, friends and families because I have memories of being up there, and I'd like to bring back something for uh, the, my close ones, my relatives. My relatives. Um, I'm bringing also some some symbols. I'm bringing my judo black belt, not to do judo on board the space station. Uh, it's not part of the plan, but just because it, it helped me a lot as a kid. Uh, and I think it, it carries values that are very positive. So, so I'd like to <coughs> speak about these values and, and try to um, try to pass them on to whoever wants to listen. Um, I'm taking a few books. Um, I'm taking the, the, the Paris Declaration about the environment to say the environment matters. Uh, what we do on board the space station also supports that vision. Um, of a better future for everybody. So there'll be a, a few surprises as well along the mission. I, I don't want to talk about everything today because uh, because otherwise it spoils the surprises. But uh, but I tried to have as a comprehensive of, of package as I could. Uh, and yes, I've got the volume and Peggy and no saxophone. Well, thank you. Next. So now you uh, spend six months in space with your crew. Six months is a long time. I uh, believe you don't plan to wait until the end to uh, share the story. How do you plan to share your impressions with people on the ground during those six months? And if you could also in French and in English, would be great. Uh, so it's a good question. We have uh, now on board the space station, we have the ability to communicate uh, with the public. Uh, first of all, with friends and families, of course, which is important for us, psychological support, but also with the public. We have a limited access to internet up there, so we can share pictures, we can share videos. Um, and I'm planning to do this, just like my colleagues did before me, because I think it's, it's a fantastic opportunity to speak about what we're doing in space for the people on Earth um, and for whoever is interested in, in space exploration or in research. I think it's, it's just unbelievable to be able to glance at what's happening on board a space station. So I'll, I'll run a Twitter account as a supporter of ESA. Um, I'll try to share some stuff on my Facebook as well. And, and all along the missions, there'll be a few, a few events that we'll try to support uh, from, uh, from the International Space Station. So stay tuned. Uh, with Isa and, uh, and with me, we will try to share the experience. En français, maintenant, donc une une opportunité qu'on a maintenant à bord de la station spatiale, c'est de partager cette expérience. On a une connectivité limitée, mais qui nous qui nous permet quand même de d'inviter les gens à, à partager ce, ce vol avec nous, de leur montrer comment ça se passe au travers des photos, des vidéos, peut-être un blog pour raconter la vie quotidienne. Euh, je pense que c'est une chance incroyable. Moi, quand j'étais jeune, j'aurais vraiment aimé pouvoir euh, ben, partager ce rêve avec ceux qui vivent. Euh, donc, je vais faire de mon mieux pour euh, ben, pour montrer aux gens comment ça se passe, pour leur dire à quel point la recherche qu'on fait est intéressante et on l'a fait pour eux, pour leur dire à quel point ce qu'on est en train de faire, c'est de l'exploration spatiale et ça s'arrête pas là, on ira plus loin dans le futur et ça je vais le faire à travers ben, mes, euh, mes comptes de, de, de médias sociaux, donc euh, un compte Facebook, un compte Twitter, Instagram, euh, sans doute un blog euh, qui va être supporté par moi depuis la station spatiale et aussi par l'ESA depuis sol. Donc, on va essayer d'avoir une, une, une offre aussi euh, complète que possible, donc euh, ben, connectez-vous sur tous ces comptes à partir du 15 décembre. 15 novembre. Good afternoon, this is Tatiana Avchinina. 360 Moscow region TV channel. I have a question for Toma. Toma, this is going to be your first flight. What steps did you take to fulfill your dream and what are your expectations from the flight? And my second question is for Fyodor Nikolaevich. Well, uh, yes, it has been my dream indeed, but uh, for now we still have to go through the final stages of our training. We are ready for the flight, but we still keep training at Baikonur. And of course, uh, currently, I can't say anything. Once I'm aboard the station, once uh, I will be looking on the Earth from there, then I will be able to say that I have fulfilled my dream. So we will talk about it in its due time. But for now, I uh, try to keep up with my uh, training. We are ready for the flight. And of course, I have my dream 
but uh, we will talk later about it. All right, thank you. And Fyodor Nikolaevich, could you please um, tell us what your wishes are for novices? And you're a very seasoned cosmonaut, of course. Well, it is hard to say because, well, I'm sure in one thing, that neither age nor the number of flights dull that first impression of weightlessness. And I think Peggy and Oleg and Paolo will agree with me. And uh, of course, uh, also there is jealousy. And this is a good kind of jealousy. And so I feel jealous of Tama because they're yet to experience it, just like first love. And Jack will experience the same thing. So uh, Katya Bella Glazova, who is here, she has uh, always told me, keep a diary. And I didn't do that. So guys, Keep a journal and please write down all your first impressions. Don't rely on your memory. And otherwise, uh, frankly speaking, I feel this good kind of envy. Everything is still ahead of you. This is the first feeling of having accomplished something that you have been aspiring to do for such a long, long time. Thank you. Uh, in English, you said that you uh, get on really well. You've obviously been training together for a long time. But anyone who's lived in a shared flat knows that the smallest things uh, can get out of hand. Is there anything that you've noticed about each other that could grate on you, that could become a little bit uh, annoying? <laughs> Maybe it's not. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. You're trying to get me in trouble. <laughs> so I'm trying to help you. No, no, I, I think it's um, it's a great question because it enables me to insist on the fact that, um, like Oleg said, it's, um, there's really two sides. There's, first of all, uh, being a professional, uh, having the, the technical skills to, to perform the job. And then it's all about character, I think. And that's why uh, in the selection to become a national, you have to be someone um, easy to work with. You have to be someone able to communicate. You have to be someone who's patient, I think. And, um, and among all these, these qualities, um, they give me the, the two best ones. So I'm, I'm very lucky. Um, Oleg never loses, his, his temper is always calm, even in the sim when I stop pressing the wrong buttons, I make all the mistakes that I'm able to make sometimes. He never loses his calm, always very, very steady, so, so I know there won't be a problem at all. And Peggy, um, even though she, she basically built a space station herself, uh, she's, she's very open to feedback, and, and when she makes a mistake, she's like, hey, I've, I've made a mistake, and we can talk about it, which is, which is just fantastic if you think about it. I'm, I'm just at the beginning of my career, and, and I'm able to talk to Peggy, and she's open, and, um, and that's just the, the chance that I have. So, um, in short, no, I haven't noticed anything that could really drive me crazy in the next six months. But six months is a long time. I try to keep my, my things tidy. I think it's one of the one of the main uh, one of the main goals uh, if you want to have everybody happy. But uh, no, I haven't noticed anything. I'm sorry. I'd like to. I, I wish I could tell you I did, but actually, I, honestly, I did. And Oleg, I, I have a question for you. So I read that in 2015 you graduated from Russian Presidential Academy of National Economy and Public Administration. So why did you decide to study there? Is it just your habit to work and study hard or uh, do you have any long-term goals? Well, I guess both are applicable uh, here, both statements, because uh, I would like to keep working, to keep working in spade for as long as I possibly can. But there is no guarantee that the doctors won't tell you that you're simply not fit for space flight. But as a man in good health, as a man, I think that I need to work, to work a lot in any field. And uh, so why not pick this field? Was it difficult for you to combine work, trainings, and studies? Well, of course, it was a point in my life when I didn't have any free time. And if I had been in pre-flight training, I would not have attempted this. And also, are you going to keep a blog uh, on Roscosmos website where you would share impressions of your flight? Because some cosmonauts say that they don't have any time. But it is also very interesting for us uh, to see what you are doing there and what interesting things you are learning. Well, if I get help, then uh, yes, I will keep a blog. Thank you. Thank you. And the next uh, final question. Ria Novosti, Dinis Piranov. Question for Oleg Novitsky. 
Are there any space walks planned in 2017 for the Russian flight program? Well, uh, let's correct the question. Could you please address the question to the specific crew? So for your crew, are there any EVs planned? Well, no, not planned. Our partners will have spacewalks, and uh, um, such tasks are not envisioned for me, paranormal flight program. However, we are fully prepared for uh, EVA tasks. Okay, thank you. And the uh, next question. TASS News Agency. I have a question for Toma Pesquet. So you have been uh, training for your flight on uh, new Soyuz MS series. And uh, of course, I'm sure that you were shown the previous version of the vehicle. And this new vehicle, of course, it's more advanced. It uses digital systems, etc. So uh, what was the training like for you on that vehicle? And uh, for somebody who is flying to space for the first time, uh, what was the training like? And uh, thank you. Well, new Soyuz MS, new version of the vehicle, is, I think, more reliable. And, uh, of course, there is a very long list of upgrades. I don't think that there is any need to go into details uh, here, but as a result, our flight will be even more reliable than in the past. And, um, of course, it is a clear sign that uh, Russian space manufacturing is becoming more and more advanced uh, every day. And, uh, well, I have one complaint. Unfortunately, the seats are still the same as the ones that we used to have before. There isn't much space for bigger people, but in the future, I think there will be new vehicles, the vehicles that are being developed by Energe, and I think that uh, such vehicles are being developed by the United States as well. And uh, these new vehicles will have bigger uh, seats. Thank you. Dear colleagues, thank you for your questions. Dear crew members, thank you for your interesting answers. This completes our press conference. Both crews, please. <laughs>